Hello again, it's Mr. Peacher, Interweb Shop Teacher, and here I am with another video, and this one is all about a little project I'm going to make, and it is a quill stop or a depth stop for the Bridgeport milling machine, which goes right here. Now that might be a little hard for you to see, so let's go on over to the big milling machine and talk a little bit about that. This will be a multiple part video. This is part one of that video. Here's a close-up so you can see where this little depth stop goes right here on this screw on the J-Head Bridgeport milling machine. Now here's the purpose of that quill stop. We have a stop right here that can be screwed into place but this is 20 threads per inch so it takes a long time to move this up into the correct position. However, with this little beauty you can just clamp it on there wherever you want that quickly and there's your stop. Now only a fool would make one of these when you can buy one for twelve dollars like this. But it's a fun project. In fact, I challenge some of you to make this. It's a little bit difficult, but give it a try and send me pictures of it if you are successful. Here I am at my beloved Walker Turner drill press, and I wanted a depth stop for this years ago. And again, these are time consuming to set. So I took a commercially made one like this. And it did not fit this thread. I forgot what size thread that was, but I reboarded and tapped it and made myself a depth stop. So that video goes way back, and let me show you the title of that right now. And that is my machine shop tips number 161, if you want to search for that and watch it. Here's a closer look at the prototype of my project looks pretty good not totally finished off because it's a prototype you can still see my layout lines which I will use since there is no blueprint there is no drawing for this and this will help me speed it up because I spent the better part of a day on this because there was a lot of designing to do it's very difficult to see how the spring is held in there you see there is a, a very stiff spring kind of tricky there's all kinds of cross holes and, and drilled holes and tapped holes in here. So it isn't really all that easy, but why don't we start out with the easy part, which is the making of these two little knobs. Actually, simple to make. I've made this type of project many times, so I will rush through this to save you the pain and agony. This is one half inch diameter aluminum rod because, and I'm going to give you a lot of dimensions like this because there is no drawing for those of you that may be interested. So you can see this is half inch stock and it's turned down here to around three eighths, very uncritical. The length is, again, these are just ballparks. You can go a little bit above or below that. I don't even know how I arrived at some of those dimensions. And then we've got a screw here that sticks out. Oh, I should go to a ruler here. It's about 300 thousandths. Do not turn the aluminum down to that diameter and thread it. It would, first of all, it would be very weak because it's aluminum. We're going to use steel screws for that. Saves time and effort. And the length right here is... 369 so I think we have all the dimensions we need this is 832 did I say that let's go over to the lathe and start this knob and we'll start by knurling knurling you will never see me use a bump type knurler unless there's a gun pointed at me but if that's all you have instead of this beautiful brown and sharp knurler Make sure that you use a center hole and a center in there to support it, but it's still going to flex on you with aluminum, and it will be a nightmare. So if you don't want to put a knurl on there, there are just make it plain or put some flutes on there with a mill or whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. Maybe you can even buy these commercially. So slow speed, plenty of cutting fluid, 
and this is kind of a fine knurl and I'm going to make one inch of knurl because this is how I will be machining this with the knurl close to the chuck jaws so there's a, some wasted knurl but who cares if you want much more detailed information on knurling and how to get successful beautiful knurls watch my two-part recent video and notice that I tilted the knurler just a little bit for a better view it doesn't really matter at all here we go Looks pretty good and I have cleaned it with brake fluid. Now I need to knurl the other ends because I need two of these and I'll do that off camera and then we'll make this step and cut it off and drill it and tap it and all that other stuff. Now let's lock tight these two screws in. Instead of using a round head screw, some folks like to use a long 632, 832 make that socket head set screw. Lock tight that in about halfway and you're done. These aren't really quite long enough. So that's why I'm going with this route. And I sawed off the excess and ground down a little uh, chamfer on there. And we're done. Kind of fun. But that's the easy part. Okay, this project is made out of three quarter inch square aluminum. It could be steel. And Vernon Courier gave me this about five years ago, four years ago. And that's what I'm going to use. Now there are several ways of making this. My hinge, this is the hinge, is made up of a separate part, namely 5 16 key stock. Now yes, that's a lot of extra work and slotting and so on, but if you look at this commercially made one, it's all one piece. Can you see that? And you can do that if you want, but I think that is trickier and harder to do. Furthermore, you could use this for one half of it, but for the other half, you would have to use a piece of three-quarter like this. And you can imagine all the sawing and milling and fitting, and there's only one pin here instead of the two, but I guess we don't really care. So this is the route I'm going on going with and I will cut off two pieces of Vernier's <laughs> Vernier Vernon thank you Vernon and I always start a little long you know, that's a bad habit of mine this is one and a half inches why don't I just cut it one and a half no I always start a little longer so I'm going to cut two two inch pieces and most of that will be done off camera and then I like to mill the ends I don't want just sawed ends and uh, I want the two pieces to be exactly the same so I'll mill them and I know I'm talking too much. Times two.
Well, I'm back, and it is the next day, and I have cut these to length exactly two inches and milled both ends so that they are a matched pair. And then I proceeded to spray Toolmaker's ink on. It's all dry, but look, you can just rub it off with your fingernail. So that's got to come off. I don't know what that's all about, and I'll put some dicum on there, and I'll be right back. Well, I've recoated the work with genuine dicum, and while that is drying, let's talk a little bit about how this works and the anatomy of it. So you can see that this is spring-loaded. So, in fact, you see these two little pinholes here? One, two. There is a spring just like that inside there. In fact, what I did here, for a little bit better view, that's the way the spring looks, but of course it's inside. One other thing now, so I'll, I'm going to take this apart right now, but this is held together with pins that are merely 330 seconds filler rod. I was going to use 330 seconds roll pins, and that would be fine for final dis uh, disassembly or assembly, but they're difficult to get in and out compared to this, and I may put a little Loctite on there, and I think I'll just be using pins this for my pins rather than this. Alright, let's open this up. I'm going to pull the spring off. It just so happens that I had several of those springs in my selection of springs. As mentioned before, this hole here is simply a way for me to stretch the spring and get it attached with the pins. So I'm going to pull this one out with the Bernards. Now it opens and I'll pull this one out. And that's the hinge pin. So this is what it looks like on the inside, and of course this other pin here is holding the spring in place, so I will pull that out as well. So now you get a little idea of how this thing looks on the inside, and I wish I would have had someone to show me that, because I'm still not sure how this one is put together. I invented this, I guess. <laughs> I do not know what this yellow plug is, but it has something to do with the spring and the way the spring is fastened. Maybe these screws right here go all, all the way in and are catching the spring. I don't know. And that would be an alternate way of making it, but I think more difficult than what I'm going to show you. So now looking at it, you can see the half nut here and the large hole drilled, I think, at 3 8 just to accommodate the spring. That size isn't too critical as long as it's large enough. And look at the slots here for the hinge. So I'm going to pull this pin out now and this little piece here is nothing more than a short piece of 516 square stock and in my case I used make a key and finally I'll pull the hinge pin out the other hinge pin I should say and then this piece will come out and you want a real good fit Next I will lay out the slots and they're 5 16 wide and this is 3 quarter wide so the thickness right here and right here is the same and that's 219 thousandths. Use a surface or a height gauge rather if you have one. And I put center lines on there in case I need them. 
and now I have to decide how long that slot will be. Now all of the layout will actually be done on the bridge port using the digital readout. These uh, layout lines are mainly just for instruction purposes and to double check what I'm doing so I don't have to make it twice. I think I'll mark it on the end as well. I already put a center line on there but let me do that off camera with the height gauge. Okay the layout is complete. The slots are going to be 5 eighths long and right in the middle you see I've got a center line there as well. That's what it looks like from the end and we will be milling it with a very sharp 5 16 end mill. Make sure that you have one that is sharp on the corners so that the key stock will set all the way down in there and not to have a little bit of a radius in the corner. So that's pretty important as well. And then the depth is one fourth deep. And I need to do two of those and then when we get over to the mill again all of the actual positioning in the mill will be with the digital readout. I'll be using an edge finder and I won't show every time I use an edge finder because I've shown that a thousand times and you're probably sick of it. Probably everyone knows how to do that. Alright to the bridge port we go. Okay we're at the bridge port and the work is mounted in the vise. The other pieces put in here simply to keep the jaws even. The work is sticking over the end just a little bit so I can catch it with the edge finder and there is a parallel underneath it. So let's find the edge and then move in half the thickness of the work which is 375 plus the radius of the edge finder for a total of 475. Did you see that? And now I will push zero on the uh, y-axis. You can't see that. And I'm going to move in what I just said, 475 thousandths. And I'll lock the table because then I am on the center. And there I am at 475. And I'll change tools and put the 3 8 end mill in. I know I said 3 8 end mill, but I meant 5 16 end mill. That's what I have in there now. So I will come down with the quill and touch the work. So I've touched off. I'm locking the quill, backing off. I have zeroed out the knee, the little graduated collar on the knee. And I will make this in about four or five passes. Not, I'm not going to go to the full depth of quarter inch all at once, although it probably would work. I like to do it gradually so that the end mill does not drift and I get a true slot. You get it? And this is the last finishing pass to a depth of 250 thousandths. Mr. Pete, you forgot to tell the folks to wear their safety glasses. That's right. Wear your safety glasses when you work on any of your machinery in your shop. So this slot is done and I will do the other one off camera and meet you at the bench and then we'll do a little deburring and talk about the hinge. Well the slots look pretty good. I have deburred them and then I took the liberty of laying out already one of the holes. Where is it? Right there. So that's 5 30 seconds from the end and 1 8 from the side and that is my first hinge pin and of course I'm going to have to cut off a short piece of this 5 16 stock and I forgot how long that is but it's uh, 
Well, we'll call it 500 thousandths. And I'll do that off camera and be right back. Well now, I have the 516 stock fitted into the slot. It's a tight fit. Now I'm going to drill 330 seconds all the way through and put a pin in. Now I want to tell you this, that the key stock is a little bit oversized, possibly because of the plating. So instead of being 312, it's more like, if I can find a clean spot on it, So it will require a little filing or sanding and or fitting in order to get it in there. So I'll go ahead and pin that and then see about drilling and pinning the other piece in. But there has to be a, a little bit of a radius on here in order to make clearance on that. So I'll do that after I get it fitted up, I think. But you see, possibly you can see what I mean here by rounding it off a little bit. You can drill these holes on the drill press, but this may be overkill. I located that hole and I'm drilling it on the Bridgeport mill because I don't want to have to do this twice. Alright, it's pinned in place and it looks real good. I got a real good fit there. So the next thing will be to put this on like that. Make sure it's seated and even. And I'll go ahead and drill that 330 seconds hole. Then there'll still be some fitting and radiusing that needs to be done so that there is clearance as I open up the dog's jaws. All right, both pins are in place. Notice that there's a little clearance here where I have this piece of paper and it won't move at all, but neither did the other one. So I have some, as I said before, some radi radiuses, radii to make. And I will do that off camera. And that's just about enough fun for today. And that concludes part one of this multi-part video. This will be continued in part two. Make sure that you find that video and watch it when available. So long for now.